So, uh, having finished the book of Revelation, we're going to start again in John, uh, going full circle with John's works. And as we do that, we'll be using Noon Setting, Daily Prayer, page 296. And when we get to it, yes, uh, Psalm 99. So, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 99, spoken in unison. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our text for meditation comes from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter, the first five verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by it, and without it was made nothing that was made. In it was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going back to the book of John because when I did this originally, uh, we didn't have the camera yet, so to live stream it, to have a, a full record of John's works in the New Testament, we're doing this again. And I think it's very fitting that we're doing it at this time uh, as we're looking forward to Christmas uh, now in this time of Advent, because uh, the Christmas Day reading for the Gospel is John chapter 1, of course. And it's basically an understanding of how, or a, a heaven's eye view of how Jesus Christ comes to us. But there's a lot of theology packed into John chapter 1, a lot, a lot of theology packed into this chapter. So I want to go through it a little slowly. Uh, to try and unpack everything that's going on in here. So when John first starts off, uh, in the beginning, well, every single Hebrew person you're going to come across, well, they're going to know, okay, he's referencing Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And even though uh, John is sometimes seen as a writer to the Greeks, a very spiritual writer, so he must be writing... Uh, not necessarily for the Hebrews, but for a lot of different people. No, John is actually a very, very Hebrew writer, so he's making a lot of references that might fly over your head. Uh, but he's making references specifically to Genesis here. And he's saying, in the beginning was the Word. Okay, well, in Genesis says, in the beginning, 
I mean, there we had uh, God created the heavens and the earth. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess He created through the word. But what does what's the significance of the word here? And John continues, and he says the word was with God. And okay, yes, yes, God and His infinite will is a divine will. It makes sense that. Uh, he had creation in mind before even time began. Uh, time beginning when God created in time. So, yeah, the word was with God, and that makes sense. And then John says, the word was God. Go, oh, okay, okay. Interesting, what's going on there? Well, John is saying that uh, not only is God, God, not only is his will his will, but the will is itself God. So God does not act, or uh, God's actions and words, his, his intent, his will, there's not something separate like we might consider for ourselves. We might consider uh, our intentions to do something somewhat different from who we are, our soul, but John is saying that God's very nature is his action is his word, is the thing that does what he wants it to do. And John is saying that uh, with the word being God, not only is um, not only is God somewhat separate from the universe, but God is that which deliberately and quite intimately created the universe. So, because when God spoke, God spoke the word, uh, say, "Let there be light." Uh, let there be an expanse, let there be human beings. Uh, when God spoke and it was done, uh, God was not separate from that action as if uh, removed from the creation itself, but God was intimately related with that creation. So God is the word that creates. But John is speaking a mystery, and he's also identifying the, tr the, the, the Trinity here. Um, he's only really concerned with two members of the Trinity at this point in time, uh, the Father and the Son. Uh, but he will be speaking a lot about the Holy Spirit as, as you continue through the Gospel. But John is basically saying, uh, yes, you have God the Father, you have God the Son, but they're the same God. And any mathematician's head would explode at this point in time, because that doesn't exactly make sense, but such are the things of the divine. They, they're they incomprehensible to us, although God reveals them as truth. Um, so, the word was in the beginning with God. Uh, for, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. All things were made by it, and without it was made nothing that has been made. So all things find their source in God, and all things find their source in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Jesus Christ, spoiler, spoiler alert in the chapter, uh, Jesus is the Word. All things come from Jesus Christ, so if we're trying to say, uh, Jesus was only only came about 2,000 years ago when he was born in a manger. Well, no, that's not quite the case. So John is trying to present Jesus as that which is eternal. Because if you have someone who is God, uh, like the word being God, you can't say that he was merely created. Uh, he merely came into the world. Jesus Christ is that who has always existed, that who is himself God. And this brings us into conflict uh, with um, non-Trinitarian uh, religious groups, uh, such as uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Mormons, etc., etc. But John is fir very firmly establishing that Jesus Christ is himself uncreated, but has created all things. And as I mentioned before, it is a very intimate creation. Uh, God doesn't remove himself from it, but through his word he creates new realities. So Jesus Christ goes into the world, well, he creates the world, and in the world then he, he shapes and forms it. Um, also with human beings shaping us from the dust of the earth, and uh, then 
the Lord, Lord God, Father, or he is, he is uh, breathing into us the breath of life. So breathing into us the spirit. So it is a very intimate act. And in the, in, in, in the word was life and the life was the life of men. And as I was saying, yes, it's a very intimate thing where God is not only uh, bringing into existence, well, I'll say, uh, inanimate objects, this wooden sheep, if that's a real sheep, it would not be inanimate, but that sheep, light, books, not only is there inanimate objects, but very, but animate objects, uh, but those who are made alive by the Spirit. Uh, so when we see Jesus Christ coming to us as the Word, he is not coming to us as something removed, but something very intimate, creating within us life itself. So the Word is that which gives us life, who is the source of life. It is the will of God that we have life. And this life was the life of men. Um, John likes talking about the light. Uh, basically, it is that which illuminates the works of God, that which does right, that which is righteous, and that which points forward to the gospel, the gospel message incarnate in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when we see, uh, and when we compare this to Genesis chapter 1, where the first word is, let there be light, uh, we are also seeing the light there being uh, Jesus Christ, who is the first among, among everything in the universe, so that uh, the uncreated light, Jesus Christ, creates the created light, that which we see by, and that light is which warms the universe. It is well, basically the, the energy that we have to power everything in the earth, because uh, very little of the earth, it, very little of the energy within the earth actually comes from the earth itself. Most of it is actually from the sun. Uh, even wind power uh, comes from differential heating of the, of the world from the sun's rays. So uh, we can actually see this kind of working out in modern day physics is that light actually helps produce life within, within the world as it causes uh, energy to be, to be uh, wrought in, in, in the biological forms. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, another way to translate that is uh, the darkness has not overcome it. So hasn't understood or hasn't overcome. And the darkness is that which is not of God, that is uh, which is hidden from God, that which is removed from him. So uh, you have a clear sense of what is God and what is not God. Uh, what is God is the light which has life, that which is not of God is nothingness, uh, death, basically. So uh, that which is seeking sin, seeking darkness, seeking a you know, way to uh, be out of God's sight, that which, that is darkness, that is going into nothingness and death. And John will make this clear distinction as we go throughout his gospel, basically dividing the light from the darkness, this, uh, that which is of God with that which is not of God. And John will try to make this very clear. As we go forward in, in the gospel, looking into the person and work of Jesus Christ, we see that uh, Jesus' work of creation did not end on the seventh day, but continues for it even now. So Jesus' work as the Word of God is not finished but continues and will continue eternally because as long as Jesus Christ lives, he will give us life. And he gives us life through his word, which we find in scripture. So we find Jesus Christ being the word of God and the will of God who works all things by, by uh, God's will. When we find God's word come to us in a written form or even through a spoken form, we find Jesus Christ working and creating and giving us new life even in this. And that is the introduction to the introduction of the book of John, finding its place as the word of God, which gives us life at the beginning and now and onto the future. Amen.
We continue on page 296 with the Curian. O Lord, have, have mercy upon us. us. O Christ, have, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, light of the world, enlighten our lives, guiding us by your word, so that we may come to life in faith, uh, so that all people may come to life in faith, and that through your word you continue to forgive us and give us life by. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God, uh, Holy, Holy Spirit, please guide us according to the word that we find in the scripture, and and uh, help us to proclaim this word to all people everywhere, that all people may not live ignorant of who Jesus Christ, but in light of him. Uh, please, Lord, guide them according to your will, according to your word, that they may not be lost in the darkness, lost in death, but may have the light of Christ, which is the light of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your bed. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. Your mercy save you free. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.